Welcome, my Elder Scrolls loving, my Eek adoring, warrior playing, high elf slaying friends to another Elder Scrolls video. I'm your host, Gronab Dabalod, and today we will be talking about a very specific topic within the Elder Scrolls community, more so within the Skyrim video game, and that is on the definitive best race to play in relation to a warrior, a master at combat who owns their armor like it was a Tuesday at TGI Fridays. I will be focused in on three main races, the orcs, Stur Dirty warriors from the distant lands of Morrowind who enjoy battling dragons over a quick game of golf. The Nords who hail from Skyrim, the hottest country in all of Tamriel. I heard it makes places like elsewhere look cold. Imagine that. Last but not least, we have the Red Guards. They come from Hammerfell and have curved swords. I bet the ladies love them. Before you start disliking the video and typing out little angry comments at me like the true Enwa you are, Imperials are rubbish. And to be more realistic, their stats don't line up with the perfect warrior build and their racial abilities and passives are just not enough to warrant me adding them to this list. Plus, it's much more simple if I just focus on the three races we all know are masters when it comes to physical combat. The ones who have muscles on their muscles on their shoulders muscles. I have actually done my research and compiled a bunch of notes on all the information I need to give you for what you need to understand to get the point I'm trying to make. And from there we can figure out which one is definitively the best. Although, I think I know which one it is. So don't don't worry. No, Maik. No, please leave. I I don't care if you just got that sword. Wait, that that's not a sword. That's a dagger. Go home, man. <laughs> not today, okay? Just not today. Like my video. So on my extensive travels through Skyrim, I have encountered all sorts of enemies and fought them with a multitude of different builds and weapons I have found and used, where some have proven to be more useful than others. The builds range from one-handed to two-handed, to archery, to thief, to assassin, to literally trying to mimic Maik the Liar. Jesus, I need to start playing other games, but like I said, some work out better than others do. When playing as an orc, a redguard and a nord, I found each to have their own strengths and weaknesses weaknesses, and this to me has proven to be the biggest hurdle to jump over when trying to figure out which one is the most efficient warrior. Now I've taken the liberty of doing all the stats and numbers in the simplest way for you to understand, and I think we will start off with the orcs, the literal feces of Tamriel, and if you think I'm joking, use the wiki Makara. Before I start explaining a quick brief of what separates races from one another, each race starts with what are called favored skills and unique skills, and they get five favored skills each, and one unique skill each. Favored skills automatically start to skill at level 20 and unique skills automatically start the level at 25, meaning the race you choose has a set advantage in them skills, making for a reason to select certain races, depending on what build you decide you want to play with. Khajiit are naturally good at stealth and thieving, while high elves are naturally good at magic. The orcs, nords and redguards have their own set of favored and unique skills too. Each race has one racial ability that they can use once per day, and also have racial passives, one each, and these things all dictate your choice at the beginning of of the game. So now you know what makes races different from one another. You were much more wise and feeble than when you first watched this video. I have made you smarter and in turn you will leave me an angry comment telling me how great I am for telling you something you probably already knew. So let's start with the orcs. Orcs are naturally known for their ability to smith wonders and wear heavy armor, like Santa wears down a bottle of whiskey the night before he sets out to slip down your chimney and give you a box of Lego. No ma'am, I just like to build. Orcs' favorite skills are smithing, block, two-handed, one-handed, and enchanting. The orc's singular unique skill is in heavy armor. Even Sherlock Holmes knew that much. These favored and unique skills make it so orcs are an obvious contender for warrior, knight, or even bandit builds that you might want to try out. Another note to add with skills is that every skill point you gain in a skill equals to 0.5% of a boost in that skill's power. So I'll give you an example. In one-handed, leveling up your one-handed from 20 to 21 will give you an added 0.5% boost in one-handed damage overall, and with it being at 21, that equals to around 10.5% extra damage for just leveling the skill up. This obviously doesn't take into account the different perks that give extra damage percentages, but we will talk about those a bit later on. The important factor with the orc skills is the unique skill in heavy armor, because armor takes a long time to level up, and having it already set to 25 allows us to access its early perks, which are quite good in the early game, especially on higher difficulty 
abilities. Now for the orcs racial specifics, they have one passive ability and one daily power to use. Let's start with the orc passive because quite frankly, I think it is the single worst passive in this game and I mean every item, every quest, everything, it's actually rubbish in comparison to the rest of the game. It allows you to be automatically bloodkin and this means you can walk into any orc mine or orc stronghold without threat of attacking orcs or having to do tedious quests. Yay! I guess, if you want that sort of thing. But their ability completely nullifies the uselessness of the passive by being one of the, if not the absolute best ability in the game, and that is Berserker's Rage. An ability that allows you to take half damage and deal double damage for 60 straight seconds. And this ability is just, wow. You will storm through enemies at unstoppable speeds. Enemies don't even exist on lower difficulties. This ability is very, very strong and can be used very effectively. If you have a bit of patience, you can wait 24 Four hours after every use and just keep using it although that will take half a minute every time you want to progress in the dungeon that's up to your playstyle but dang is this thing good so let's move on to the nords Nords are known for making snow run away like your dad does when he goes for milk. And that's at knock speed, and this is because Nords grew up in the harsh winters, so they are more accustomed and immune to its bitter bite. Like orcs, Nords share similar advantages in skills and structured stereotypes, with the Nords being looked at as big burly warriors who growl at you when they want food. The Nords' favorite skills consist of smithing, block, one-handed, light armor, and speech. As you can see, some similar skills to the orcs, except this time around, the Nords' unique skill is two-handed, where an orc has it as just a favored skill, meaning Nords love using both their hands to grab onto long things. They also have an advantage in speech, which is strange to see in a warrior-based race, but if you think about it, the scent starts to come in when you meet some of the Nords who drink in pubs. They remind me a lot of the Irish. A few pints in and you're telling stories of your involvement in the rover's trip to Mars. The Nords passive is one of my favorite passives in the entire game, with Nords being naturally 50% resistance to frost damage. And Talos, do I love this. You know how much I hate frost magic? So having this kind of resistance is a must have in a world where everybody uses frost magic. The Nord daily power is called battle cry and allows them to cry in battle and frighten enemies all around them away for 30 seconds. Useful in a tough situation, but not the most threatening to use. Now let's move on to our final contender. Red guards are known for having swords curved curvier than a straight ruler, and not just the women love this, but the men too. I know I do. Yahoo! Red guards hail from the harsh hot lands of Hammerfell, and there is a lot of them migrated into Skyrim, which I didn't expect at all when I originally played, but it's nice to see Skyrim allowing a variety of races and cultures in, especially the Khajiit. I love me some kitty cat boys. The Red Guard's favorite skills are as listed, smithing, block, archery, destruction, and alteration. Their unique skill is in one hand. Handed, the opposite one of the Nords, and you can already see the similarities and changes. While they share some of the same favored skills as the other two races, they have two magic skills favored, and this is because Red Guards are known to use a technique from their homeland called Sword Singing, which dabbles a little bit in magic. So this is probably where some of this came from. Let's pray that if the Elder Scrolls 6 is in Hammerfell, we get to use this glorious battle style. With all that being said, having two less favored skills in physical combat is going to really hurt the Red Guard's chances, but let's not jump to conclusions conclusions just yet. Let's look into their passive and daily ability. The Red Guard's passive gives 50% resistance to poisons, weaker than Argonian's natural resistance, but handy in battle with spiders and especially Chorus. But to me, I don't think useful enough to warrant jumping for joy over. The Red Guard daily ability is called Adrenaline Rush and allows the played Red Guard to regenerate stamina 10 times faster for 60 seconds. Definitely useful in power attack focused builds, but again, very specific builds. Although lots of stamina is useful, we want to think about what it's is useful all round. So with all that being said, I'm going to tell you all now, and this of course is my own personal opinion, done with a ton of research to back it up, that using two-handed is just not going to be worth it come the mid or late game. While the two-handed weapons dominate the early game, this is without any perks or upgrades and anything else, and the simple fact that two-handed weapons just have a high base default damage to pull from. For the ultimate warrior build, you are going to want to absolutely put everything into one-handed and block, because this is just the factual best form of combat to use, because with one-handed, you are limited to one skill tree in combat. With two-handed, it's the same thing, limited to one skill. While with one-handed and block, you get to own two separate combat forms and master them around your character. So with that in mind, we need to look at which race starts off with a boost that is good enough to center around the build. While each race has block as a favored skill, only one of them have one-handed and two-handed in their build, meaning you could effectively use both one-handed, block, and two-handed with an orc. Of course, Redguards start with 25 and one-handed thanks to 
it being their unique skill, but we also want to think a bit around variety. Not every warrior uses one-handed, they also might be talented in archery or two-handed weaponry. Block has some of the best perks in the game, with perks like Elementalist Protection and Quick Reflexes being good for either Orc or the Nord. The Elementalist perk stacks with the Nord's Frost Resistance, meaning 100% Frost Resistance on the Nord character. However, we don't want to choose someone because of one good thing, we want our perfect warrior to have multiple good things about them. With these few things in mind, I would like to knock being a red guard completely off the list as I feel the favorite skills in alteration and destruction are holding it back, and while the stamina ability is incredibly useful for warrior builds, the poison resistance is too specific and will only work in very specific situations. So to choose between the orc and nord we have one more thing to look into and that is the armor. Between heavy and light armor, we are going to immediately knock light armor off of this list because I feel warriors will naturally wear heavy armor. All warriors you come by in Skyrim are wearing iron or steel armor and the stereotypes exist. Now in Skyrim, the heavier the armor, the better it is at protecting you and heavy armor is, believe it or not, quite heavy to wear. Mix this in with smithing and enchanting and you have yourself some powerful armor. Daedric is always a better option than Dragonbone. You get a higher armor rating with Daedric and you want more armor rating. You never want to be squishy at any point during your warrior build. Now here's the thing with all this information. The orc has an advantage in not just smithing, but enchanting too. Did you forget about this completely random favorite skill within the orc's chosen skills? The orc unique skill is also heavy armor, which means for the type of character we want, the orc is the absolute perfect match for what we want to achieve as a warrior. And with that, I must bid farewell to our Nord as while they have their own strengths and weaknesses, they aren't cut out to be the best there is. So you have a massive boost at the beginning of the game with an orc. You can master smithing and enchanting faster than the other two races. You have an advantage in protection. I'm not sure I mentioned this, but remember how I said the weapons get a 0.5% boost per skill level? Well, this works with armor levels too. So having 25 in heavy armor already has you at a health advantage. Mix this with the variety in choice between one-handed, two-handed and block. You have got choice in your character and the ability to mix and match. Given these, you also have your daily ability, which will allow you to shred through through enemies and survive even more damage. The orc is obviously the no-brainer when it comes to choosing the perfect warrior. The simple fact that you not only get a boost in smithing, but a boost in enchanting too, gives you that little head start in crafting the perfect armor for your character. Get yourself a small amount of gold at the start of the game and you can create an infinite loop of crafting stuff at blacksmith's forges, selling it for a profit and rinsing and repeating this cycle. Enchanting all the daggers you make with petty gems can get your enchanting up quite fast. You could be using mid-tier gear within only a couple of hours of starting a character with these advantages at hand so why not do that and see what kind of character you can create all in all i personally feel the orc is just hands down the best warrior when choosing between races and while you can play any race as a warrior the orc is already cut out for it from the very beginning and to me the orc is the strongest warrior in skyrim but that's it for this video. I had a lot of fun making this one and I very much hope you enjoyed listening and hopefully I taught you something new that you didn't already know about orcs, nords, redguards or general stats. This game always has questions I want to answer for myself and do research on. I very much enjoy analysing stuff and while some stuff might seem more simple than others, to me, it's all fun and that's the main thing. Hopefully this video can keep you guys going for a while. It's coming up to Christmas and I am hella excited for it. Gotta get that Christmas spirit coming in soon, you know? This video took me a while to make and I would really appreciate it if you considered leaving a like or a dislike or even sharing the video as it's the best way to support my content and if you are new maybe consider subscribing to see more content like this in the future of the channel. But that's enough from this Irish Khajiit. I do hope you all enjoyed and I hope your cold days are treating you with warm feelings because I do love winter. I'll uh, see you guys and gals in the next one.